क्लियरेंस चेक वॉल्व क्लियरेंस टैपेट एडजस्टमेंट ऑल दिस डिफरेंट टर्म्स कम अक्रॉस इफ यूर अ मोटरसाइकिल राइडर चेकिंग एंड एडजस्टिंग योर वॉल्व क्लियरेंस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट मेंटेनेंस फॉर बेटर प्योर एफिशियंसी एंड ऑल्सो फॉर अ बेटर थ्रॉट ऑफ रिस्पॉन्स लेट सी वॉट इज इज वॉल्व क्लियरेंस ऑल अबाउट एंड ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड हाउ टू चेक एंड एडजस्ट इट इन योर बाइक विद ईज First let's understand what is this tap it adjustment is all about. Every motorcycle engine is composed of a cylinder, a cylinder head, two, three or even four valves depending on the engine model. When it comes to SOHC engines, ideally you should be having something called as a tap pit or a wall clearance that is already fixed by the manufacturer. And for the DOHC engines, you'll be having something called as shims which is a physical disc that determines how much wall clearance will be allotted for each valve now for understanding this wall clearance or tap it let's understand the four strokes of engine first the intake stroke then the compression then the power stroke and finally the the exhaust stroke in order to occur this four strokes the valve has to open and close in the predetermined time so let's check out this one individual valve to understand it better this is a camshaft and camshaft is driven by the timing chain a rocker arm is placed on the camshaft to convert the rotational motion of the camshaft into an up and down motion now the other end of the rocker arm also has something called as a tappet pin which is locked by the lock nut now we have the valve itself which also has a upper stopping plate for holding down the spring now let's see how this entire setup functions on the first place when the camshaft rotates the cam's lobe pushes the rocker arm on the upper side which in turn pushes the valve down due to the spring's tension the valve is forced to push backwards into its original position but only when the camshaft allows the rocker arm to move on to its original position now if you people have noticed this there's a small gap between the valve itself and the rocker arm spin this tiny gap is called as valve clearance and this particular clearance is very much necessary to adjust to the thermal expansion that occurs when the engine is heated and for each engine type manufacturers determine what sort of clearance should be kept depending on the engine's performance and heat production and this is only the basics and i think you have understood how does this valve work and the importance of valve clearance too much of clearance that means the valve doesn't open completely as specified by the manufacturer which in turn means less performance and slacky throttle response and if you have too little of a clearance then that means your valve doesn't close completely which will have a compression leak which will drastically degrade your performance and also ruin your fuel economy so let's see how to adjust your tap end or the valve clearance in your bike and increase your fuel economy as well as your performance by adjusting the tap end or the valve clearance at your home so let's get started here in ns200 start by removing the pillion seat next remove the two bolts holding the rider seat down once you remove the bolts remove the rider seat out of the bike now there are two bolts holding the side panels start removing the upper and the lower bolt and remove the side panel out of your bike repeat the same process for the other side panel too now there are three 12 mm bolts and two 10 mm bolts holding the entire tank assembly to the chassis start by removing the 12 mm bolt from the right hand side left hand side and then followed by the front hand side Now remove the two 10 mm bolts which is holding the entire tank assembly from left and the right side panel. Once this is done, disconnect the fuel indicator sensor connection. Now using a plier, bring down the canister hose lock clip and then disconnect the canister hose from the tank. Now next, disconnect the fuel supply line from the other end. There is one more fuel breather line that is connected to the fuel filter. You have to disconnect that too. Once all these are done, slightly wiggle the tank and expand it from the both the sides and remove the tank out of the bike. Make sure that you don't damage the ignition coil that is there in the both the sides. Now we have to remove the air filter cover. It is held by four bolts that we have to remove using a 10 mm socket. Once all the four bolts are removed, Push the air filter cover in the front side and then lift it up. Next, clean the engine's head cover using a piece of cloth 
in order to avoid any dirt or grime entering into the engine. Here I am removing the SI unit that is secondary air induction unit. To make some clearance, remove the two 10mm bolts holding the SI unit. Unclip the lock using a plier which is connected to the input of the secondary air induction. Now remove the hose from the SI unit. Now remove the pipe connecting to the intake manifold. Now finally, disconnect the engine's input line of secondary air induction and pulling the hose out. Once this is done, your secondary air induction system is out of your bike. Now there is one 8mm bolt holding the input of secondary air induction hose to the head cover. Remove that and remove the clamp. Now the entire head cover is held by three 10mm bolts and one 12mm bolt. Crack it loose in the crisscross pattern and also remove it completely, always making sure that you remove it in the crisscross pattern itself. This will avoid any load on the cover and which will prevent it from cracking. Once you remove all the four bolts, your head cover is free to move out of your bike. Carefully remove the head cover and inspect its oil seal. If the oil seal is damaged, consider replacing it and do not use any sort of glue or gasket making sealant to put back the head cover. If your oil seal is in good shape like mine, you can always reuse it. After doing all this, finally we have the access for the head unit of your bike. Before doing any sort of adjustments, we have to set the engine's piston to its top dead center position, which is also called as TDC. We can do it by rotating the camshaft a clockwise direction using a 12mm socket. Make sure that you see the T mark on the top position and also there are two lines which has to be in line with the engine's header casing. Once this is done, you can go ahead and adjust your tappet or valve clearance. In my case, I can see that my rocker arm is very tight and has no clearance at all, which was one of the reasons that I experienced power drop in the higher RPM. Now using a 9mm socket, I'm loosening the lock nut which is holding the adjuster pin. This is a special tool which is used to hold the adjuster pin and this is not a mandatory tool to buy as you can do the same with your bare hands itself. But using this tool will ensure that you have precise control of your valve clearance while you tighten back the lock nut. Now one mandatory component that you have to buy is a filler gauge. The filler gauge has multiple sheets of different thickness which we can use to adjust the valve clearance as specified by the manufacturer. Here in case of NS200, the inlet valve clearance must be 0.05 mm and the exhaust valve must have 0.08 mm. If you are interested in buying this filler gauge, I have provided the link to purchase in the description below. And the wall clearance that I mentioned here is only applicable for all the NS and RS owners. And in order to find out what is your particular wall clearance, you can always refer to your owner's manual. Now using the 0.05 mm sheet, slide it between the rocker arm's pin and the valve's head. Now slowly tighten the pin to a point where you can feel a slight resistance. You should set this pin in such a way that the filler gauge slides between the valve and the rocker arm pin such a way that it is not too tight or too loose. This is where the use of special tool comes into picture. You can have a precise control of the adjustment using the tool instead of your bare hands. Once you feel that you have enough clearance, use a 9mm ring spanner and tighten the lock nut as shown. Here you can see I'm using the special tool to lock the adjustment in place so that while I'm tightening, clearance set will not change. Once you tighten the lock nut, confirm the clearance that you set using the filler gauge once again. Now repeat the same process for the other inlet valve too.
once you set both the valves confirm once again for proper clearance if you find it too loose or too tight repeat the same process of the adjustment till you get a proper clearance set now when it comes to the exhaust valve you must use 0.08 mm of the filler gauge the entire process of adjusting the valve clearance remains the same for inlet and exhaust valve apart from 0.05 for inlet and 0.08 mm for the exhaust valve Once you set all the valves clearance properly, one final time, confirm you have proper clearance set using the filler gauge. Now insert back the head cover, making sure that you don't damage the oil seal. Once you insert the cover, hand tighten all the four bolts and tighten it completely in a crisscross pattern. Next, connect the inlet pipe of the SAI unit and connect its lock clamp back. Now insert the clamp that is holding the secondary air induction pipe. Once this is done, connect the SAI unit back to the bike chassis. Now connect the secondary air induction hose to the SAI unit and also connect its intake manifold pipe. Now insert the air filter cover by sliding it from front to back make sure that your air filter cover has its two locking pin inserted properly as shown in the video next insert all the four bolts and tighten it in a criss cross pattern now making sure that you guide the drain pipe as shown insert the tank assembly back onto the bike chassis now first connect the fuel filter breather hose next connect the canister hose and lock it in place now connect the fuel line and lock it in place finally connect the fuel sensor socket as shown now tighten back all the 12 mm bolts from the right front and the left hand side Also tighten the two 10 mm bolts from the front right and the front left side. Insert the right side panel and tighten its bolts. Repeat the same process for the left hand side panel too. insert your rider seat and tighten its two bolts now finally put back your pillion seat and your tappet adjustment is completed i hope this video was informative enough if this video had helped you in any ways support this channel by hitting the subscribe button and also hit the like button and share it among your friends thank you so much for watching archeonics and stay tuned for more such interesting content